Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using Windows environment variables in Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. Before we get too far into the content, just want to take this opportunity to ask for your support for the channel. Uh, it'd be great if you could go ahead and give me a like. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This helps the algorithm pick up my content and makes it more readily available. Thanks a lot for doing that. Now let's talk a little bit why this content is important. So automated processes naturally have some sort of dependency on configuration. And you need configuration, you need to be able to figure out like what are your paths, you know, where do you store specific assets, maybe it's utilities or tools, and you need to be able to retrieve this configuration quite easily at runtime just to allow for some dynamic nature, especially when you think about different environments, dev, test, prod, etc. Now, configuration can sometimes be challenging inside of the Power Platform. The situation has improved recently with the environment variables that are supported inside of Microsoft Dataverse environments. What we're going to be talking about here today is something quite different. This is actually a feature that's very old. Uh, it's been around in Windows for years, um, but more recently Microsoft has provided support for Windows environment variables. And as a result, Power Automate Desktop or PAD can go ahead and take advantage of this feature in order to retrieve data. Now naturally you can still go ahead and pass variables from cloud flows to desktop flows. That is you know, generally the prescribed approach, but there might be some scenarios where you just want to go ahead and access it from Windows itself, especially if you have some legacy processes where maybe you've already been using this for years to store the path of specific network folders and maybe you have a set of utilities and you know that's going to be pretty consistent or, or static and this becomes an opportunity to just you know maintain it at the Windows level and then be able to leverage it from Power Automate Desktop itself. And so what we're going to see in the demo here today is the actions found inside of Power Automate Desktop that allow us to go ahead and manage these environment variables. Now if you're not familiar with Windows environment variables, this is something that's part of the operating system. You can just go ahead and click on your, you know, the Windows button in the bottom left hand corner and just do a t just search basically environment variables and what's going to happen is you're going to be brought into this specific dialog right here. And if we go ahead and click on the button at the bottom right hand corner, we're going to see environment variables. That's going to go ahead and bring up this experience. And do note we've got two different scopes when it comes to environment variables. We have the user scope and then we have system scope. Now what's important to understand with these is that when we talk about user scope, these would be the environment variables that the logged in user has created and has access to. And so they've got full control over their own user variables. If we have a different user that logs in, they're going to see different user variables. They're not going to see, say, mine in this case. Then what we also have is system variables, and you can kind of think of these more like global in nature, where if you wanted this to be consistent across any user that logs into that machine, you could go ahead and include a system variable itself. And naturally, there's going to be some permissions. You as a regular user can't manipulate the system variables um, and you can't you know, go ahead and delete them uh, unless you are some sort of an admin because uh, that would naturally break things. Now the other thing we're not going to cover in this video but it is worth looking out, looking up or checking out is the notion of group policies or what's known as GPOs because what you could do as an administrator of say you know servers and, and desktops in an organization is go ahead and push out these environment variables and say okay for this specific security group if you're part of the security group you are always going to have these specific environment variables just to allow for the consistency of these envir environment variables and, and how they're proliferated across the environment itself. So that's kind of the background on environment variables let's go ahead let's check out a demo and see this in action. Okay so we're in Power Automate Desktop now the first question is where do I find these specific actions? If we come over here to the search bar we can just type in environment 
and then what we will see is the related actions that are available to us and we'll go through each one of these here right now so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set windows environment variable or essentially create an environment variable and so what we can do is just drag this action onto our canvas and then go ahead and populate it so here what we're going to do is provide a value and this is the value that we're going to see inside of the windows variables itself now what uh, what we can do is I've just brought up that environment variables experience that I showed you in the slides and you can see that we do not have one created um, at this point and so there's no sort of smoke and mirrors here now what we're gonna do is provide a value so this is kinda like a key value pair here's our key uh, and then here's our value and all I'm gonna do is provide the location of a specific folder you know C demos windows environment demo then what I can do is I can choose the scope user or system now what I did find was that when I log in as myself and run this as a regular user I can't go ahead and create a system scoped variable I was getting an error um, but if I go ahead and run just as a regular user there's no problem now I can subsequently go ahead and create a system environment variable um, outside of pad and that works no problem then I can retrieve it but from a creation perspective I just don't have the right permissions when I run this inside of pad which I guess kind of makes sense so we're gonna keep things scoped to user for now so that's uh, the first step then what we can go ahead and do is we can retrieve or get the Windows environment variable and so what we can do here is go ahead and select from a path um, you know the the variable that we have basically created in the past itself now what we can do is uh, we can if we have a lot of different variables we can sort of reduce the scope um, and basically only include user um, you know or I could do system if I wanted but I have some filtering capabilities there the next thing that we can go ahead and do is we're just going to display essentially the value that we've retrieved now I, I did miss this in the first step but if I go ahead and uh, sorry get the value I can go ahead and create an output variable and so I can, can change the name of this if I want but this is where we're going to store the value that was retrieved from our environment variable itself and all we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and display it um, because this is just like any other variable inside of pad and then the next step what we can do is we can go ahead and delete it once again just going to go ahead and you know provide that environment environment variable name and then uh, you know I have to specify the scope and we can go ahead and delete it so let's go ahead and let's just run this and see what happens okay so what's happened is we've created our environment variable we've retrieved the value and then we've basically displayed it here in this message now if we head back to our environment variables experience inside of Windows we can now see that it has been created successfully so I've got a variable here called my file path and then the representative value that's being stored there and so let's just go ahead and just cancel this and we'll leave this I'll just pull this to the side and then we'll let this run again and then now we've gone ahead and deleted it if we bring this back open this up we see that the variable itself has been removed so very simple demo but I think the I didn't even realize that this feature existed it was something that showed up in the June release notes and just got me thinking that configuration is always something that's so challenging to manage and there's going to be some times where you want it more dynamic and it makes sense to push from cloud flows to desktop flows but there's also some use cases where things are pretty static they don't change much and it might be just simpler to include or create a Windows environment variable that is just available to everyone like through that GPO process that I talked about before so curious to know if, uh, if you find this uh, particular feature useful go ahead and put something in the comments to say how you would use this um, but definitely I can see a, a good usage for very consistent approaches maybe COEs that want to have a common place to go ahead and, and store specific tools or documents so that concludes another episode on the channel. Thanks for checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. On YouTube, obviously, likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Uh, please go ahead and take care of that just so that uh, we get more visibility 
to the channel itself. Thanks and take care.